Hey everyone, we've got another heart today. This is number 729 in our collections. You see that the lungs are still attached. The heart would have sat roughly in the chest like this. Anterior surface coming out towards the screen. Posterior surface towards the turntable. Head or superior here. Legs or inferior here. Left over here, right over here. Let's do what we normally do, which is start off by trying to identify the right atrial appendage, at least externally. And here we find an atrial appendage that's triangular, broad-based, or pyramidal in shape. And we already see some suture lines here, but we'll go ahead and open the heart. And take a look inside. And when we do, we immediately find that there are pectinate muscles that spill outside the confines of the appendage, consistent with the morphologic right atrium. And then we also see almost immediately that in the oval fossa there is an oval fossa atrial septal defect so there is an asd in this heart when we look for the other structures in the heart it's hard to find the mouth of the coronary sinus but let's go ahead and dig around a little bit and here we go here is the tendon of totoro and here behind it is the mouth of the coronary sinus this is the tendon of Totoro here. And we know that the mouth of the coronary sinus, the tendon of Totoro, and the right-sided atrioventricular junction form the triangle of cock. So once again, the mouth of the coronary sinus, the tendon of Totoro, and the right-sided atrioventricular junction form the triangle of cock. And it's at the apex of this triangle where we expect to find the atrioventricular node. So we'd expect the AV node to live here in this heart. Also want to point out that here is the superior cable vein draining into the superior aspect of the right atrium. And here is the mouth of the superior cable vein draining into the right atrium. And once again, here is that oval fossa ASD. Now, when we turn our attention to the right-sided AV junction. We find that it's guarded by a valve with three leaflets, one, two, three. There are direct connections of this valve to the ventricular septum, consistent with a morphologic tricuspid valve. This ventricle that we see here has coarse trabeculations, and we can see the septomarginal trabeculation, aka the moderator band here, all consistent with a morphologic right ventricle. And once again, here is that septomarginal trabeculation, a.k.a. the moderator band with its cranial and caudal limbs. Then we come across the first arterial valve or semilunar valve. This one has three leaflets, one, two, three, with three sinuses, one, two, three. There don't appear to be any coronaries arising from within it, all consistent with a morphologic pulmonary valve. And note that the true annulus which is the border between the fibrous valve, our leaflets, and the myocardium, is actually not round or oval in these arterial valves. It's actually this crown shaped because the half circle fibrous valve, our leaflets, have triangles of myocardium interposed in between them. The round or the oval structure that we call the annulus clinically, the basal ring, that's not to say it isn't a helpful construct or a helpful thing. It's just to say that the true annulus is actually crown shaped and the basal ring is that round or oval structure that we like to create clinically. Here's the pulmonary trunk. And from the pulmonary trunk, we do see the branch pulmonary arteries arise. Here's the left pulmonary artery, and here's the right pulmonary artery. Now let's go ahead and flip this heart over. Here's the posterior aspect of this heart. Here we see the left atrial appendage. Here's the mouth of the left atrial appendage, and we can see that all of the pectinate muscles are confined within the appendage itself. This atrium here is entirely smooth walled, all consistent with the morphologic left atrium. Here where my finger is, you can see the ASD, the oval fossa atrial septal defect. And then when we get to the left side, left sided atrioventricular junction, we find a two leaflet atrioventricular valve without any connections to the ventricular septum, consistent with a morphologic mitral valve. But, but compared to the tricuspid valve we just saw, this is obviously much smaller. It also appears a little dysplastic, a little more scalloped than usual, maybe a little rolled at the edges. 
So there does appear to be a dysplastic mitral valve, likely with some degree of stenosis clinically. Although, of course, we can't say that with just having the specimen in our hands. Here is the left ventricle, which is hypertrophied. The cavity looks smaller than that of the right ventricle that we just saw. So here is the right ventricle. And then here is this kind of muscle-bound left ventricle. We know it's the left ventricle morphologically because there's fine crisscross trabeculations. And then let's get into the left ventricular outflow tract here. When we get into the left ventricular outflow tract, we do find a second semilunar or arterial valve. This one has two leaflets, one, two, and two sinuses. We do see that this valve does have fibrous continuity with the mitral valve, and this would be the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve. And we do find a coronary artery arising from within this uh, the sinus here, all consistent with an aortic valve. Now this is a two leaflet, two sinus aortic valve. And you can see that the ascending aorta is also a little smaller in dimension than the pulmonary trunk. So we are dealing with a heart that does have small left-sided structures. There's some degree of uh, dysplastic mitral valve and mitral stenosis. There is a degree of hypoplasia of the left ventricle. The aortic valve is bileaflet and does have a smaller annulus than the pulmonary valve. And then the ascending aorta is also a little smaller. Now let's take a look at the ascending aorta a little bit more. Here's the pulmonary trunk. Here is the ascending aorta here. So you can appreciate that the ascending aorta is in fact smaller than the pulmonary trunk when they're side by side. And then as we come across the arch here. Here's the ascending aorta. Here's the transverse arch. And then here is the arterial duct. Okay, so this structure right here is the arterial duct connecting the pulmonary trunk to the aorta. And right in this area, we can see that there is, in fact, a narrowing of the transverse arch here. So there is, in fact, some coarctation as well. And then here is the descending aorta. So a heart with a with mitral stenosis, small left ventricle, an abnormal aortic valve with aortic stenosis, possibly clinically, and coarctation, all consistent with a heart with small left-sided structures, but it's not helpful to call this Schoen's. Remember, when Schoen described his complex in 1963, there was four distinct entities in it, in it supramitral valvar ring, parachute mitral valve, subaortic membrane, as well as coarctation. But neither Schoen's complex or small left-sided structures really com conveys any helpful or detailed information. So we should always strive clinically to describe the heart because that's more telling. Is there mitral stenosis? Is there aortic stenosis? Is there an ASD? Is there a VSD? Is there an arterial duct? Those details are more important and clinically actionable. And so we should describe these hearts as there is.